Hey, everybody. Welcome back to The Best Thing Ever, a podcast about the stuff our friends like. As you know, I can be somewhat of a hater sometimes, although this week I've had a pretty good week. I haven't hated very many things this week. I have hated the term microdosing and uh, thought a lot about Michael Collins. You haven't microdosed enough. You know. I just well, macro dose. Yeah. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, you do it a few times, you'll get there. I think that's what it is. I think you have to be doing drugs to think that it's a fun term to say. <laughs> um, although I have tried to start applying it to other things, like micro dosing food is like a snack. Mm. We'll see. Might catch on. Micro oh, snacking. Do, is it that micro dose are too small? Do you want a nano dose? Yeah, or? nano dose. That's why you or don't take big, any drugs, but you right, just again. think you have. Yeah, it's like yeah. it's like a LaCroix flavor <laughs> rub it around of you. a drug. Pretty sure yeah. I'm on mushrooms. Pretty sure. <laughs> I mean, I've had a coffee. Hint, hint water does it. Uh, yeah. I'm pretty sure I'm on mushrooms. <laughs> but generally this week I've had a low hate week. But anyway, the show is about balancing out the hate that I have had on the internet by talking about things that my friends love and finding out ways to love them even more. <laughs> uh, this week... We're talking about chickens. <laughs> this is episode 25. Why is that so funny to you already, Hunter? It's yeah. just funny because it's just Keep, like, yeah. this is a show where we talk about things our friends like, and this yeah, week yeah. it's chickens. Some people, look, we're, you're, you're going to learn about this. People are very passionate about chickens. There's a oh, whole, I there's a very passionate subculture about chickens. Um, Anthony has a deep dive for us, including things like this old timey man holding a chicken, this cock and bull story, and these elaborately painted eggs. All that and more gorgeous paint job on Plus these Plus, we're going to um, rank it on the master list. Let me introduce you to the panel. I am your host. I'm Alex Falcone. Uh, and I'm going to introduce everybody in a game that I call Two Hosts and a Lie. This week, Three Hosts and a Lie. Uh, so I'm going to tell you a fun fact about each of us. One of them will not be true. So a fun fact about me is I, won- I played in a weekly poker game for a long time. It was run by a bunch of guys who sold meth. That's what they, that's where they got their money mm. for the poker. It was from meth. Wow. wow. So they were not good at poker, but they were good at math. Uh, How fast were those games? <laughs> <laughs> well, they, they were mostly selling. I think they were not getting high on their own supply. When I was ah. with them, it was mostly tequila was what they were doing. So it was actually a pretty slow nice. game. Um, they were professional. Yeah. Also not good at poker, though. So I don't know how good they were at meth. Um, also joining us, our, our marketing expert, Ezra Fox. Fun fact about Ezra. Ezra learned how to swim five years ago. Yeah, it wasn't a problem, though, because I learned how to not get in the pool mm. like 35 oh. years ago. So we're good. <laughs> also joining us, I don't think I used that one already, did I? Also joining us, uh, our as chief historian, Mr. Anthony Lopez. Fun fact about him, he tears up extremely easily at movies. Yeah, and it's just getting worse. Um, I'm proud of this. I love <laughs> crying in movies. It makes me feel good. But it's like, it used to be like the movie has to, had to earn it. Now it's like, it's getting more yeah. and more that it's just like, if certain like themes, especially, kind of come up, I'm just like it's a, it's it happens, you know. Did you I, cry in Oppenheimer, like in no. 70 millimeter, just looking at people's pores or whatever? No, I did not. Yeah, um, you, you you texted me afterwards though that if it had been 80 millimeter, you would have cried. It just wasn't yeah. quite yeah. big enough. It just wasn't <laughs> no, big I, enough. Oh yeah, I, people I, talking, I enjoyed you know? Oppenheimer the way you're supposed to, <laughs> sitting there quietly like this. <laughs> yeah, my fingers over my lips, just focus intently. Uh-huh. Wearing a suit, mm, yeah. super villain yeah. pose. I, I, I watched it the way in, slow clap at some Christopher point. Nolan intended it. You know, I respect the artist intention. <laughs> he didn't cry because he was too busy standing ovations, doing standing yeah. ovations the whole yeah. movie. Just every <laughs> line, he was so into it. Um, also, he, he just kept today. saying, "Great idea. That's a good idea." <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, this is what you're supposed to do. You I go like home this. You, you want to go home and build a bomb. We should do this. Well, at yeah, home. I mean that's that's really my biggest problem. I was expecting that movie to give me the recipe to make a nuclear yeah, bomb, dude. and it did it. And it's really yeah, messed taking up. Taking notes. Yeah, I was expecting to leave for with like a pretty good idea of how to do it, but uh, they really didn't us, cover it. Uh, Mr. Hunter Donaldson is a board game influencer, and a fun fact about him: his address is five thousand and twenty-six in dog years. Yep. <laughs> that's a I just got joke. doxxed. For dogs, any dogs uh, listening, yeah, I have dogs. been doxxed. Oh, they're like yeah, dogs, dogs are doxed. rushing to my house right now. Yeah. <laughs> and then we have a very special guest today. Uh, she's a writer, a comedian, a puppeteer. It's Phoebe Bottoms. Welcome back, Phoebe. Hi, everybody. Thanks. It's for so having good me. to talk to you again. You too. I've missed you guys. Yeah. Yeah. It's not been the same since we. What did we? Do? We talked about some terrible CD you liked last time. Some terrible Nickelback or something. I we don't talked know. about Nickelback. Yeah. That's did what we? it was. That was a one. I mean, we talked about Clifford. We talked about Nickelback. Yeah. yeah. Oh yeah, Clifford. Remember. That was fun. Uh, You've brought Clifford, so many things big. into my life that I wouldn't have yeah. thought of otherwise. Um, a fun fact about you, Phoebe. 
And everyone at home knows this already, but the uh, the lie is not in our guest. The lie is one of the four regular hosts. But as a fun fact about you as a guest that is true is that you've only ever won bingo one time, and you didn't notice until it was too late to collect mm. the prize. Which oh. was a bubblegum oh, scented so sad, pencil. Dude. Also, when you started that, mm. I thought you were saying that Even all the guests at home already know this thing about me. Like it's <laughs> universal information. Yeah, everyone knows. Everybody everyone knows, knows, knows she can't win a bingo to save her life. In Just a real grade, shit bingo Phoebe player. Lost bingo, like one bingo, but didn't know it and has uh. since always lost. It's just the Have thing been, that people know. Wait, it is an attention game, or uh, if there's no punishment, you just you know, it's always buzz in, basically. But Phoebe, how much do you play bingo? I think that's the important part of this. Yeah, question. have you been chasing that high ever <laughs> since? Like, have you just been constantly at the bingo tables but never winning? I mean, look, I'm, I'm a chaser. <laughs> and, yeah. Uh, wait, but can I'll we go tell back you this. A second, as what? what do you mean if there's no punishment? How are you playing bingo no, 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 when there's a no, no, punishment no. phase? We'll get back to my punishment bingo later. Dude, uh, you're using to... plot <laughs> pens wrong, Alex. If there's no punishment, yeah. you don't know how to use those bloody ink pens. If, if you if you get a line, that's a bingo. But if you get a diagonal, somebody shows up with a stick. <laughs> 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 boos you. If someone boos you if you're wrong. You just like oh, you say that's, that's a mild right. punishment. It's just yeah. a, a mild booing. I don't know, man. If you go to like a bingo hall. Like a serious bingo hall, which this was oh, not. Yeah. This was just my second yeah. grade Miss Felix's class. Uh, stakes were low, and part of me felt like raising my hand so I could just. Mm. Add, I I had. It was a good day to learn that I should follow my instincts. Yeah, and yeah. my intuition. If you want to follow Phoebe, follow your instincts to follow Phoebe around the internet uh, at Phoebe Bottoms on Instagram, also PhoebeBottoms dot com. Also, Phoebe, uh, since we last talked. You have put out two books. Oh, oh Christ. Oh. Dang. Yeah. <laughs> I haven't talked to you since you started putting out books. Uh, you don't need to read them. You don't need to read them. Oh, we can buy them, though, right? <laughs> buy them, though. Yeah, yeah we buy them. Yeah. They're, they're two. Yeah. So they're two. Um, they're my best books. friend Lisa and I got hired by this publishing company to write uh, two joke books, one about uh generational things it's called okay boomer and the other one about mom jo- like mom jokes this was mm. before i was a mother and mm. uh, <laughs> stolen valor <laughs> it was yeah. <laughs> there's a fun fact no, 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 no. that's the, that's like that's like pre pre that's early delivery valor right like oh you got, yeah, yeah. yeah really, i, I yeah, mean yeah. by the time we did the radio tour for the to promote the book i was pregnant so at least i felt like less of an imposter mm. slightly Perfect. like slightly yeah, uh, yeah. But the mom joke book, it's like they wanted it to be like 350 pages long and we're like just of one liners, which is chaos. So, uh, yeah, it's it, a lot of lines. And it was during COVID and like everything shut down. And Lisa and I, her and her boyfriend and my husband and I and all of our dogs went to we fled L.A. and went to live in my mom's basement in Minneapolis for a couple months. So like two weeks before the book was due we were like uh oh we got to we got to go on <laughs> oh this my thing. God. <laughs> and then and then the um the week that we were finishing it our friend richard bain killed himself <laughs> and george floyd was mm. murdered 5 miles away from my mom's house so oh, we're wow. in the midst of a race war Oof. and grieving our friend so we just had to do a bunch of Adderall <laughs> macro dose Adderall and write one liners <laughs> for like 3 days straight so the oh. Amazon review of this book are like, what? What is? What is this? And we're like, I don't know. Neither of us are moms, and we're sad and scared. And there's a pandemic. <laughs> and, and Adderall's and great for, for that. In in that situation, I, mean, I can't imagine. So here's the thing: they're wow. kind of all over the map. Someone's saying no jokes, just a lot of reflection and advice, and someone else says hilarious and relatable, five stars. So like, <laughs> wait, you someone's there for someone. Yes, I actually, got it, yes. <laughs> Is that even a star review? Yeah, look, gave it to a friend who's also a mom of young ones, and she laughed so hard she cried. Really? So, yeah, Phoebe. I cried too from all of the horrible things that were happening when the book <laughs> yeah. was being written. Well, look, you've certainly sold our audience on buying this book. Yeah. I mean, go I, for I it. I get no proceeds from it whatsoever. Oh, well, so, it, look, buy it, then buy it used, right? So, um, yeah, right. So, buy yeah. no, I, I, buy I, used. I, yeah, I think buy it used, but also I think. Like, I'm way more interested in reading this, knowing the backstory, than if yeah. it was just, here are some solid 
<laughs> mom jokes. <laughs> like the fact that it's one liners written by two people who are out of their minds living in a basement with six dogs. Like that's so and grief. What an interesting book. Yeah. What a, it mean, probably that, hits completely different now that we yeah. know that. You know what I mean? Yeah. The tone is strange, yeah. you know. Oh. Yeah, that story should be like on the inside of the dust jacket. Like yeah, it yeah, yeah. feels like it's kind of probably like the Rosetta Stone for the book. Like you understand <laughs> that. And it's like, oh, everything just clicks into place. Extreme, the, 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 the quotes on the back are like extremely relatable. Somebody and then in parentheses, somebody going through a real rough patch. <laughs> I wow, these guys <laughs> seem scared. <laughs> yeah. My mom right, would be really so we, glad that I was finally able to tell that story because she oh, thinks she's oh. like, I think that's the funniest. Thing ever. I, it's very funny to me. I am uh, honored to have been one of the yeah. radio shows where wow. you did do that. What but we are brought you here not for that. <laughs> we brought you here, Phoebe, to talk about another thing that you care a lot about, and that is chickens. <laughs> mm. So uh, you, uh, in addition to becoming a new mom, you also became a backyard chickener during this process at some point. And uh, so I'll, we start by, before we talk about the deep dive, Anthony's prepared a great history of chickens, a bunch of fun facts about chickens. Before we do that, let's start with your core memory of chickens and the reason why you pick chickens. So I have, for the people who are watching along on YouTube, youtube.com slash Alex Falcone, you're seeing a picture of one of Phoebe's chickens who's also had kind of a rough day in this picture. Uh, real hair mess thing going on with this chicken. Um <laughs> It's so like tell me about your chickens. Like How did this come about? It's as hell. Yeah, it's a palm tree kind of feather deal, which is like yeah, yeah, yeah. The yeah. Sides. It had been raining really hard all day, and she—I should have sent you the other picture. She looks exactly like uh, Andy Warhol, and it, oh, yeah. she oh, does yeah. look like Andy Warhol. <laughs> Holy it's, cow! It's wild. It's one specific of him. One specific picture yeah. of him that we all kind That's of know. Lot. I know but, exactly um, what you're talking about. Yeah, mm-hmm. we're all googling it. Right anyway, now. Yeah. but she usually has this like incredibly elaborate feathered crown that hides her eyes, and I have bangs and terrible eyesight, so I really, mm. <laughs> I don't know. They're my little spirit animals. These guys. Do, I, have I mean, two of them. so for those of you looking at the finger, I threw, I threw up the Andy Warhol picture, but like she does look like that yeah. Andy Warhol picture. Yeah, That's really like, good. Yeah. It's um, so it's not. So how did you get? How did you get her? And what was the? Yeah. What has it been like since then? Well, I have I have five now. Um, oh, I started chickens. with. I've always loved chickens. I've always, mm-hmm. you know, I've always appreciated them. I had one uh, at a barn I visited that I really got along with, named Hermione, which I now know. Mm-hmm. I think mm. in retrospect was an Australorp. Um, mm. And yeah, I don't know. They're just like they're so cool. These chickens at this barn that I used to see, they would like catch frogs and show each other. The frogs mm. wouldn't be dead, but they'd like hold them in their beaks, and they'd be like they're incredibly like, social. It's like hey, yeah. check it socially out. intelligent oh, that's cool. animals. Good job. <laughs> and they're like, they're like, hey, look a frog. Look at you get that frog. Mm. That's, um, that's great. Anyway, I just job. I always really loved them, and then. We lived in L.A. for 10 years where you can own chickens, but, like, we rented, so, you know, we didn't yeah. know where to oh. put them. So then finally when oh, we moved sorry. to Connecticut... I thought you meant you rented chickens. Oh, no. <laughs> yeah, yeah. It's, it's, I was like, oh, yeah, it's a month-to-month chicken. Month, month yeah. Month chicken. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. You, you, can, yeah. you can rent yeah. chickens to kill okay. ticks and things in your yard. Oh. You can do the same uh, thing. Oh, okay. yeah, you can use them like a chicken tractor. Yeah, yeah, exactly. Yeah. Um, so anyway, then we moved to Connecticut in 2023, and I was like, all right, I got a yard, yeah. and everyone around here has livestock of some variety. So, it's chicken time. Um, it's chicken time. Actually, it's the way that time. it happened, my husband's addicted to <laughs> free like libraries. Nice. Okay. Yeah. So, and there's one in this stupid place called Charcoal Chef, this like dumb little restaurant down the road from our house, and he uh-huh. came back. Uh, we like stopped and he ran in to check the free library and came back with a stack of like hardcover beetle books, but then also this this book on like homesteading. Uh-huh. And I started reading the chapter about chickens and I was like, It's time. Yeah. And he was like, <laughs> Am I bipolar? So like, hey, it's time right now. He was like, wait two weeks and yeah. if you still want the chickens, they're on layaway. You found a breeder. It's, it's like a an angry letter. Nurse you take in your Water desire Town. for chickens, put it in what? a drawer for two weeks. <laughs> He's like, I'm going to cool put down it period. here. You got to yeah. incubate that idea. You exactly. Sit on it for a little yeah. bit. Exactly. Keep it warm. Let, Let it that hatch. idea hatch I had to sit on it as their mother hen. So he was like, <laughs> I found this retired nurse like 10 minutes away from our house who had like a batch of Australorp chickens. And uh, 
he was like, in two weeks, if you still want the chickens, we will go get the chickens. And I was like, very fair. Couldn't yeah. stop talking about them, thinking about them. <laughs> two weeks yeah. later, yeah. we he's like, all right, no problem. Let's go grab these chickens. So we go to this woman's house, get four chicks. I show up. She's like, Sex. So sexing chicks is an incredibly, it takes two years to be certified, to get certified to do it. And the only way you can do yeah, it the, is in the first. So Anthony, I know you know a little bit about chicken sexing because of that. Uh, and, and Hunter as well, right? From that, uh, the Oscar movie two years ago, the Korean movie. Mm-hmm. Oh, yeah. Minari, they were chicken yeah. sexers. Oh, yeah. I forgot oh, really? all about that movie. What was that called? Yeah. Minari. And, Minari. Yeah, yeah. Oh, Minari. Minari. They were chicken sexers. I and it was like. Yeah. Yeah, but it's so. So I, I I read about this more, but so they're like, it's you got the one hole, yeah. But there might yeah. be a tiny thing hidden inside it when they're yeah. very small. Mm. So you're just flipping chickens and digging through them real quick. True, seems very hard. Chicken There's sexers also- d- determine the sex. Just to clarify, that's yeah. that's yeah. what's happening. Yeah, yeah. yeah. So they figure out because well, all I felt like this is an important yeah. thing you know, look, to say. Everyone sure needed on the to circle page. back on that, Ezra. If you, the yeah, entire audience w- knew what we were talking about. Yeah. We're all adults. We don't get caught up on stupid, silly things. All right. Yeah. We're here to have an adult conversation about chickens, damn it. Yeah. And no As jokes. A, the chicken fact, talk. The fact <laughs> that you still call it that means you're not ready. <laughs> Yeah, I think um, someone has to go into timeout. But so it's important. <laughs> the, but the reason why you have to do this, right, is because you don't want roosters because they're very bad neighbors. Mm. Yeah, and they have a tendency to get aggressive. Some breeds more than others. People yeah. don't. I mm. I love roosters. I think they're. Mm. I mean, obviously they're like astonishingly beautiful because they're yeah, all. Yeah. You know. Don't Don't let them hear you say that. So in in Los Angeles, you are allowed to have backyard chickens. You are not allowed to have roosters. Most people. And look, I I didn't want roosters. I love roosters, but I didn't want roosters. Mm, But we show up to this woman's house and these chicks are, you know, she's a human nurse, not a chicken butt nurse. Mm, Those are different (laughs) things. So she's like, we get there and she takes So you're rolling the dice. Rolling. Well, she was like, hey, I saw on YouTube how to try to tell them apart. Because their wings <laughs> are kind of shaped different, males and females at that age. So I was like, all right, I guess we're gambling today. So yeah. I got four chicks, and they were the beans. It was Jelly was my favorite. She was the leader. And then Whipple, Pinto, and uh, Lima. Aww. And Aww. they were, I think at that point, probably three weeks old. And, you know, raised them in the house. They ran around the kitchen. Our son was, I think six months old at that time so he would just sort of like sit on the floor and just watch them yeah uh plop around anyway long story short one morning i woke up and matt was like hey do you hear that and i was like no what he's like jelly's a rooster and then whipple turned out to be a rooster and they i I was trying to find um wait so you you would say 50 percent of these chickens (laughs) turned out to be male (laughs) crazy yeah it didn't wow I didn't win in Vegas at that woman's house <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> that sexing day. Uh, anyway, that was that was my first batch. And then I, I left town um, and Matt was home with them. And one day all four, he left them in the backyard, left the house for 45 minutes and all four of them disappeared without a trace. I don't what? know what happened to them. Well, I don't know where sure. they went. But Something I good like, for sure. I mean, look, they were they were big, and it's two roosters protecting these other two hens. So in my heart, I like to think maybe they're out there somewhere. Mm, they are. Did, did you just you just um, started a feral chicken colony? Mm-hmm. Yeah, could be right. Feral coop. Maybe. I feel like I'd hear them crowing, but I don't want to think about it. Yeah. So anyway, ordered my next batch. On uh, mypetchicken.com. Yeah. And they oh, were six get, week so you, old pullets. So you got to get them where right. they go to the post office and you can hear them cheaping in the back? Mm. Yes, sir, I did. Wow. Yes, so sir, I did. Mm. So I got three Brahmas, two light Brahmas and one light, or uh, two dark Brahmas and one light Brahma, which is the largest, second largest breed of chicken after the Jersey Giant. And oh my they goodness, these are, are ridiculous. Look at these guys. Yeah, dude, they're nuts. So I'll, I'll send you some pictures of these guys. But wow, um, yeah. So I got them at six weeks old and 
because they weren't like day old chicks. It took some time to gain their trust. But oh my god, I they're just my big fluffy dogs now. I mm. love these ladies so much. And then uh, this last spring, I got three new babies, day old. Um, a silky named Sodi who un- was killed by a hawk a couple months ago, which is very sad. Awesome prayers. Uh, yeah, the thing with chickens is there's nothing lower on the food chain, so it's <laughs> really hard. <laughs> Everything wants to kill them. And yeah. uh, anyway, so there's that. But then I got. So basically, and then what you're saying is it. you, as a hobby, are feeding a neighborhood coyote. I mean, I guess if you want to put it that way, you can. If you just yeah. want to ruin the rest of my week. Yeah. Mm-hmm. <laughs> you hope not. If you're doing it. I don't know what. I don't know. I was how hoping to you'd take that better. Uh, oops, <laughs> um, anyway. <laughs> Apologies. <laughs> <laughs> well, anyway, okay. So this is awesome. If, if you guys cannot tell yet, I'm very, uh, I'm very open to the idea of chickens. I would love to have chickens if I didn't rent. This is, uh, I'm so best. on board with this. As you seem like of us, the one who's most likely to be able to have chickens. I mean, so we have bees currently. Um, yeah, your, your wife has really? like a bee colony. You know, yeah. Uh, yeah, like like intentionally, uh, and these are. These I was going to say yeah. accidentally. Yeah, or? No, these, these are intentional bees. <laughs> Our neighbors uh, have chickens, um, and uh, they we've given them honey, but I don't think they've ever given us eggs. So like, I should like mm. get a better barter mm. system going here. Uh, right. Oh, wow. yeah. yeah, but uh, sugar but, for protein. But like, I also I don't. Well, also at my uh, my daughter's preschool, they have chickens as well, and I feel like I'm like I'm chicken adjacent, where it's like I haven't gotten like a chicken you know, like urge necessarily. Uh, but like, I feel like it's, I, I get it. It's a lot of, it, especially if you have more than one, this seems like fundamentally a lot of eggs, like seems mm-hmm. like a lot of eggs to go through. Is that right, Phoebe? Mm-hmm. Yeah. I mean, we have, it was so funny cause th- remember the week that eggs became unattainable? Yeah. yeah, yeah. I think it was like December. Mm-hmm. It was the same day they, st- my girls started laying. <sighs> that like they were wow. like, hey, you a millionaire right now? Crazy! And I go out and there's like four beautiful eggs, and I was like, this is I'm a king. <laughs> yeah. like, I can just pay my mortgage in eggs. <laughs> it's like a, a box was like eleven dollars. It was insane. Yeah. Wow. yeah, yeah. I have not bought, bought eggs since. I've got three chickens. We have had the same car- <laughs> egg carton from that day. <laughs> To this one that we have like replenished <laughs> and it's always this it's perfect so if we have three chickens that lay probably we get like four eggs a day uh and you just sort of like get your way through it yeah. and you get sort of a dozen built up but then you can always sort of fluctuate i i can't imagine even when these new girls grow up and start laying these two it's like that's gotta be a lot of eggs yeah I was yeah, really surprised to learn about how, like, the way you can control how much a chicken lays by essentially, like, what you do with the eggs, right? Like, they can lay eggs every day, but if you don't want them to, you can, like, let them incubate them for a longer time. And they oh, won't lay eggs if they're incubating, hmm. right? So you have to, like, take their eggs and then you do that and then they will keep continuing to I've lay definitely eggs. heard that if you don't take the eggs away, they'll sometimes just eat them. They'll just be like, oh, look, a snack I made with my butt and then eat it. <laughs> We've all been there. Yeah, I mean, and they Tough eat not to sometimes. They eat their sh- they eat the shells. It was such a funny thing when oh. we like. That's okay. So here's the other thing about chickens: we have no food waste anymore. All of our scraps, oh. which with a toddler yeah. is unbelievable, because right. yeah, so yeah. much shit goes on the floor, and it felt so gross to just like throw all that food away. And now we just have this little like bowl on the counter every day that just gets scraps every time we clean out the fridge if there's old produce we okay so the chicken coop our coop is in the garage so they're safe and uh, i took our son's kiddie pool and filled it up with um uh dirt and ordered (laughs) earthworms from texas Mm, so there's a thousand earthworms in there and so we just compost with that so they eat whatever scraps they want and then it sort of gets buried under this sediment like my husband threw so away some cool. old potatoes a couple months ago and then there were like these stalks growing mm. in the in the dirt and we we're like what is that and these like giant potatoes yeah are just growing in this fertile yeah. soil by potatoes accident are amazing they can, yeah 
Okay, so yeah, egg, they're yeah. the <laughs> eggs of the of the earth. Well, yeah. they're dirt eggs. Yeah, exactly. We all say that they're dirt um, eggs. <laughs> uh, we we would call them the the plant of eggs, mm. an eggplant, if you will. Um, but we're not going to do that because Anthony has done a lot of hard work in doing some research about chickens. So now we're going to move on to the deep dive. Yay. Anthony, why don't you inform us about uh, what you've learned this week researching chickens for us? I was, I'm still talking because I'm trying to get to... There it is. Anthony, it's time for the deep dive. Yeah, so uh, today we're here to talk about Gallus Gallus Domesticus. Mm. Yeah. A.K.A. the chicken. Uh, Do you know that there's 23.7 billion chickens that on Earth That seems like right a lot. Now? Whoa. Um, that's like a rough number. That uh, means if we, like, we each... Could get three. Yeah, I mean, we can or, each take three right now. Or three could come after us and kill each of us. Oh my right god, now. Oh, that's you true. Know, Don't I mean, tell them that they outnumber they have three us to one. Outnumber us, you know. <laughs> but um, even if you stacked three chickens, I'm taller. I could take them. Yeah, I, I mean, I don't know. they're pretty look, intense. They get big. Yeah. Yes. Look, yeah. I'm not going to fight a chicken. But if it was yeah. to the death, I'm not going to let a chicken kill me. But no, I, guess, I mean, Alex, my, the thing is, feeling. you're right, and that's why it hasn't happened yet. But right. the number is yeah. growing. <laughs> right. You know, we're up yeah, five billion it. in like five years. Like that's this is so going true. to we're, eventually. Us and chickens are both increasing the population for battle, yeah. specifically. Um, <laughs> Planet of the Apes was a documentary about chickens. <laughs> you know what I mean? Yeah, but it was um, actually about chickens. Yeah, uh, you know they are the most common bird on the planet. I didn't know that. I thought that was pretty interesting. Um, and you know, when I when I do these presentations, I usually try to find like an interesting sort of like angle for why this might be the best thing ever. And like when I was real researching chickens, one of the first things I realized, and I think it's an interesting argument about why I think society has proven that chickens are one of the best things ever, is the fact that we live in a mostly chicken based like language. Is what we have, like, <laughs> oh, language is low-G chicken base, is what I'm trying to say. Like, huh. so many of our words and idioms are based off chicken, right? My wife and I, over the past few days, have just been spitballing. I've been creating this huge list of them, right? So, like, you can be a chicken, you know? Um, you can scratch out a living. You can have egg on your face. Society has a pecking order. There's, you know, don't put all your eggs in one basket. Don't count your, have, um, your chickens before they hatch. Ruffle your feathers. Rule the roost. It's it's not what it's cracked up to be. You can mm. play chicken with someone. Uh, oh, you can yeah. be a bird brain. You can, uh, chicken feed is used to describe things. Hen house. If a bunch of women live together. Uh, hatch an idea. Chick. Uh, we call girls that cockpits. Um, yep. I, ha I have that down here somewhere. I have a lot of them. Right? I just generated this huge list of these. Right? Cockpits yeah. come from cockfighting. Um because early oh. boat cockpit, early boat cockpit areas looked like cockpitting ring, cockpit rings, oh, wow. cockfighting rings. So that's why they started huh. calling them that. Yeah. Um, okay. Crazy. And it's lasted to this day, and we still call plain stuff cock, uh, cockpits, right? You can feel cooped up, no spring chicken, a cock and bull story, something Jeez. in your crawl, <laughs> um, up with the chickens, chicken scratch. Someone can be a bad egg. You can be henpecked. <laughs> If you want to break it, want to make break some eggs to make an omelet, like a chicken with the head cut off, uh, uh, strutting your stuff, nest egg, shake a tail feather. That's on here twice for some reason. My bad. <laughs> really got to uh, do it because it's walking, so good. Yeah, it's a good one. Walking on eggshells, flew the coop. You eat like a bird. You have questions like chicken or the egg if you're high, wow. right? You it's have, like, do we have any human phrases, or is it yeah, all exactly. chicken? Yeah, no, it's, it's all chicken. chicken so we have no culture. We, we just got yeah. it all we from developed. chickens. Yeah, it's all like, from chickens. That's why we have language. Like, why did the chicken cross the road? Which is uh -huh. a really old joke from the 1860s. The, the so first like, joke, the original yeah, it's joke. One of like, and what's funny is like this joke is like essentially what, like I never understood. Like I always thought like was this funny at one time, and it's like no. The point is. It was always not funny. It was always like an anti-humor huh. joke. Yeah. It's essentially a Tim Head Head uh, Heidecker joke. Always. Like, why did, no yeah, kidding. Yeah. Why did the chicken cross the road to get to the other side? It's a fake punchline. It's not like supposed to be funny. Yeah. You know. It's like the first it, that funny idea was like, wouldn't it be funny if it wasn't funny? Actually, and that's you know <laughs> yeah. that's why everybody thinks too. You know. 
That's how long it took humanity to be like, no, nah, jokes are better when they're not good. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> we'll go up there and I'm going to pretend I suck at comedy, dude. <laughs> it's yeah. Like, yeah. I'm a genius, yeah. man. I'm an artist. Really early on. <laughs> yeah. Wow. Um, and of course, you know, there is the word cock. Uh-huh. Um, which is, you know, uh, uh, yeah. What's really interesting about Wait, nothing cock- to say about that one, Ezra? <laughs> <laughs> Me specifically? <laughs> Just gonna let that one go then. Just Fine, gonna right. announce yeah. very quickly the word cock. <laughs> um, it's so, notes you don't play, Alex. I don't know yeah. what you want me to do. All right. What's interesting about cock is it's it's one. Of, it is probably the oldest euphemism uh, in existence. Uh, people have been calling penises cocks longer than they've been calling any genitalia any other word besides what it is. <laughs> it is, is the oldest. True? Yeah, it is that like one of the oldest ones that's still in use for sure. Huh. Right. Um, and what's really funny uh, what I learned about this is so cock is really old, uh, and it, for a long time people just were adults about it. Right. That was it. <laughs> um, that's what they did for thousands of years. People were just. But then like, someone, whatever. someone wrote, "Why did the chicken cross the road?" And everyone was like, "I can be a comedian." Oh. <laughs> yeah, when, I, when I talk about it, though, like it's more joke. like stories. Yeah, but I'm kind of just happened? my. It's my truth. You know, I'm just talk about my weird family. <laughs> it's my truth. It's my truth. Uh, Talk. <laughs> in the 1770s, Puritans came around, right? And they were oh, so uncomfortable. <laughs> And scandalized by saying the word cock whenever they referred to a a rooster, that they created a new word, rooster, right? That is why we have that word. Wait, rooster is censorship? Yes, (laughs) rooster is like the original censorship, right? Oh, wow. It was... Yeah, so, it, so it yeah. was called they cock forever. Need roosters. Yes. It, it was called cock. Then we it started calling that's what it was. the body yeah. part that. And then the Puritans event the Puritans were like, well now I can't say that anymore. Yeah. Wow. They were so scandalized so, by the word that they just created a new word to start calling cocks that. Wow. And that sounds like, like something the, my in laws would do, and they're very yeah. Presbyterian. <laughs> it's it's like I mean, people there's who, a direct line. Like people who say heck instead of hell, right? right. It's like right. it's like you just created a weird version of it so you cannot say it. <laughs> I, I like it though, that's because it's just like at one point people just gave up. It's like, okay, look, chickens don't get that word anymore. We just like we just we, we, we give up. Yeah. We give up. Uh yeah. you know, uh, body parts can have it. Now now we'll find a new word for chickens. I mean, it's at good. some point We're fine. at some point, don't fight it. If something's really caught on in the zeitgeist, you're never gonna win it back for just chickens. Yeah. You're not oh, gonna be like, true. We're taking this back for chickens everywhere. <laughs> mm-hmm. Yeah, I mean roosters. Roosters a good word. Yeah, yeah. I didn't it comes from. About that. It just comes from fuck roast. with the word rooster now to show those puritans. Oh, yeah. Somehow it comes <laughs> you know? from roast. Yeah, what does cock? rooster mean now? It like, what pe- roast cock roast is what, cock. and they somehow shortened that into rooster. I don't know how, but but don't chickens oh, roost? Isn't it just from? it doesn't? Isn't it just the verb like to roost? They they're roosters. Well, I mean, are they roosting? Yeah. Yeah, yeah. They roost. Oh, okay. Do we, do we get it later? <laughs> Were they cocking so, before? I guess that. I mean, but all chickens roost, so yeah. that's always what I thought. It. I don't know. I was like, yeah, roosting is like a word that's chicken related. <laughs> I don't know. Yeah. I, why is this so? Why is this Look, all I'm saying is, whenever I say roost, I mean my butthole. Yeah. Oh, great. That's how I'm doing it. That. Yeah. Uh, That's it. Now we got to find a new word for your yeah. butthole. No, you're. Yeah, mm. I like it because it's like a verb. Yeah. You're rooster. You know. Yeah, yeah. That's you, my rooster. You would use your butt rooster. to roost. So. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Like, hey, nice rooster. Man. <laughs> yeah. Like that. Oh, I've been roosting um, this morning. <laughs> <laughs> you know, uh, chickens. Also, it's very weird how many religions and mythologies chickens play into all across the world. Mm. Right, there are the roosters of Ra- the three roosters of Ragnarok, who are like gonna start all that. Like it's these Whoa. three giant roosters. It's like a cosmic chicken. Yeah, yeah. That'd be like silhouetted in, Sa- in yeah. Saturn. <laughs> um, is this? A, have, I can't tell. Is this a this is a, a movie thing? No, this is Norse mythology. This is how in oh. Norse mythology how Ragnarok starts. 
is with the three roosters. Three well, roosters no kidding. Ragnarok, so, yeah. We had, we had four horsemen, and they had three chickens. Uh, three, three, yeah. three, three roosters. Yeah. <laughs> three roosters but they like also a have... Man. Roosters are way scarier than horses. Yeah. 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 They also yeah. have the giant snake and, like, Thor yeah. and Odin. So, like, it kind of balances out, you know? Just to be clear, though, Phoebe, it wasn't the... Ho- it's not the four horses of the apocalypse. It's the <laughs> men on the horses that <laughs> are scary. Yeah. Oh, well, yeah, but they like, have swords and are, like, in all of hell. But this... Like, the horses were good boys. They didn't know. Yeah. Well, they were good. They were just riding. They're, They're riding just regular I like horses. My oats. <laughs> and I don't know how scary those guys are. Yeah. Like, uh, if they yeah. weren't on their horses, they'd just right, be they're just four, the men. four men. Just four men. Not yeah. that yeah. many men. The four dudes of the apocalypse. <laughs> Not that four many men. <laughs> four guys. It's a normal amount of dudes. Four horsemen. Without, they're and four behold, men. a man we're to, riding nothing. Just, we're uh, the just walking. And on. <laughs> Yeah, just a just a pale man, and behind him was the four, hell. The four pedestrians of the apocalypse. <laughs> yeah, that, oh no! <laughs> fucking hide, hide everybody. Yeah, they were, we're good. Anyway, we're gonna wait it out. I think I feel I mean, I'm like walking down. Now you dirt. put those men. You put those men on giant roosters. Oh shit! Oh, oh my god! god. Yeah. Yeah. Seriously, the four, you got your four rooster apocalypse. Yeah. I should four cock riders. The apocalypse sound <laughs> terrifying. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> <laughs> I got some Jew ideas. It's definitely the apocalypse. Okay, Anthony, yeah. continue. Um, <laughs> you know, uh, speaking comedy. of Christian mythology, uh, the chicken and uh, roosters are real big in there. Obviously, there's like the whole Peter story. Right? Oh right, when, he was like, like racing Jesus... the cock crow to get his yeah, I mean, no, it denials was just, in. Yeah, exactly. Like Jesus, <laughs> like you know, literally Peter's biggest L is like his main symbol because Christians yeah, yeah, are yeah. weird like that. I mean, it's the same reason that, right, like, G- no, the main symbol for their god is the cross that killed him. Yeah. You know, Christians really like taking your worst moment and making it your sin- It's like, it would be like if Batman's symbol was the gun that killed his parents. Yeah. You know what I mean? That's, that's how Just Christianity... Just wears it on a necklace under his jersey all the time. Yeah, yeah that's how Christianity does their imagery. I, yeah, um, that's the branding, you know? Phoebe, yeah. just, it seems like you haven't heard the story, but they're having dinner. And Jesus is like, listen, Peter, you are going to say you've never heard of me three times before the rooster crows. And then Peter's like, nah, I would never. And then five minutes later, someone's like, have you seen Jesus? And he's like, who? Yeah, and then he does it two who? more times. But never it's like heard minutes of later where he's yeah. like, I've never wait, heard of that wait, guy. Wait, is this at the Last Supper? Yes. The Last it's, Supper, it's, it's, yeah. They say that at the Last Supper, and then it's like af- like post-supper it pre-murder. It was a busy night. There's a lot of yeah. stuff that goes down. Yeah, yeah they went saw a movie. Was, okay. They did a bunch of stuff. So between yeah. like splitting the check, someone was like, do you know... I, I assume know, that Jesus can't be. Paid he just probably picked it up, right? No. You think they sp- you think they went What do you save when your money for, guy? You think they didn't? I guess he's coming back. <laughs> if Jesus invites you all to dinner, you assume he's paying. Yeah. I would assume. Well, especially That would be my assumption. Maybe he didn't and that's why they crucified. Maybe yeah. that's why Judas was like, dude, Everybody I don't make as like much as you. Right, yeah. cuz they thought he was paying and then they all got stuck with their own Judas- check. <laughs> Judas got like a garden salad and a water, and everyone else got like six you guys drinks suck. Yeah. and like entrees. And Jesus was like, over, he's that guy that like gets too many apps, and you're like, fuck, I don't even eat meat. Yeah. Like, yeah. I'm not gonna yeah, have any of that. Why do you think he, I have acid reflux? Why do you think Judas needed that 20 pieces of silver? Right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. He had to pay off his day. Yeah. Otherwise, he's gonna have to wash dishes all night. Uh. <laughs> this is the most Christianity I've ever. I don't know why yeah, my in-laws never told me about this stuff. stuff. I was yeah. totally buying it. It's so it. fun. I mean, there's so yeah. many cool things to take away from it. <laughs> yeah. yeah. I mean, that's, I you know, so. like this story is why chickens are, so, are on the roof of, like, most churches. For a lo- for long time, that was a rule. Oh, sure. Oh. Yeah. That you had to have a what, chicken a on your roof. What? Of your church be, to oh, honor I mean, Saint Peter it's a, again? A car in every uh, His... you know driveway, a chicken on every <laughs> roof, right? Yeah. That's what the... A Chevrolet in every it's driveway, sound. a chicken on every roof. Yeah. yeah, that's that's also why uh, chickens on weather vanes exist. <laughs> is that they're an ode to Saint <gasps> Peter? Seems like a shame. Um, it's literally a shame. A, a wow, Peter shame. Yeah. Yeah, I think again. switching All wait right. switching though Horrible from real branding. chickens to the metal chicken is a bummer for humanity. I there should be real chickens on the roof again. <laughs> yeah. Well no, it was always metal chickens. Right, you don't put a real chicken yeah, they'll on leave. your church. You they don't a metal chicken. Oh, it's an icon. Boo. It's not yeah. chickens go home to roof. It was ch- I don't yeah. care. You know, you have stuff like the I don't I have a Chinese. real chicken on my roof and whenever yeah. I want to know which way the wind's blowing, he like licks his finger, Just puts it up in the air, and then tells me. Yeah. It's north, man. <laughs> That's teamwork, baby. 
You know, you have That's crazy. Like the, I didn't know that. The year of the, the Zodiac, the Chinese, uh, the year mm. of the rooster, which, by the way, if you were born in the year of the rooster, you were uh, beautiful, kind, kind-hearted, hard-working, courageous, independent, humorous, Ooh. and honest. Oh, that sounds so cool. So anyone Not born me. to that? What year is that? 8193 uh, 2005. Yeah. Nah. I don't um, think well, you're saying everyone born in 1981 is honest? Uh yeah, not hey, I don't make that, the rules, yeah. man. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. That's what that is. Yeah. Huh. I haven't looked through the Chinese zodiac, but are some of them bad? Uh, are there some of them cuz these are all be. compliments and I just don't know that that's true of everybody. I mean, it's a non-exhaustive yeah. list. Right, there could be some things just aren't listed in that. Oh, yeah. so they right? could be beautiful, Zodiac, kind-hearted, right? hardworking, courageous, independent, humorous, honest, and really bad tippers. Yes, yeah. exactly. Right. <laughs> right. Okay. <laughs> just straight up yeah. murderers. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> uh, yes, the year of the rooster, where everyone does murders. <laughs> <laughs> the purge, purge, purge roosters. Yeah. Ah, the purge rooster. Yeah. Um, you know, we got we got to talk. You know, you got to talk. You got chickens. You got to talk about you know Easter and that uh-huh. whole weird thing with eggs. Obviously, yeah, the pagan eggs. stuff it was stolen from, right? Mm-hmm. Like eggs have been used in like this amazing, you know, like religious ceremonies and chickens in general. They're really big, like in you know Japanese mythology, is this idea of this bird that begins each day and end ends each day with an announcement. There's like this yin and yang sort of like circle thing in the chickens and how they sort of up you know get applied to the culture. Um, you know, it's the chicken's world, and we're just living in it. Yeah. yeah. Um, that's, you know, but I want to talk about how we got here. Because how we actually got here with chickens is way different than I thought it would be. Um, so let's go back 8,000 years ago to Southeast Asia. Sure, Southeast yeah. Southeast Asia, there's this bird called the red jungle fowl. Um, this bird is descendant. Uh, this bird's descendants were around when the dinosaurs were around. Um, this b- type of yeah, because I've heard, I've heard very, the dinosaurs were just big chickens, so these yeah, are like yeah, similar chickens. Chickens, <laughs> chickens are the closest ancestors to Tyrannosaurus rexes that we yes, had. that's true. If they, if they were like this though, that whole movie's different. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. right. Jurassic You're Park right. is a lot less scary if they have a chicken size. I don't know, man. T Rex. I mean, my when my roosters were grown for the short period of time that I had them. Uh, Jelly d- stood off to my dog, mm-hmm. and it was like, "Oh, that's scary!" Yeah, yeah. like they—they're terrible. Yeah. Yeah. Again, they are. I could take no, them in see, a fight. That's actually—I'm glad you brought this up because this is actually what we got to get to next. All right, I want to. Yes, yeah, <laughs> this is so. What's really crazy about chickens is that for the first six to eight hundred years, that people are domesticating chickens, that we are uh, breeding chickens. No one is eating them. No one is eating their eggs. That is not what we domesticated oh. chickens for. The reason why we domesticated what? chickens was for cockfighting. Oh. Whoa. That is the reason why we have chickens. Was the idea that this was why we did it. You know, and it's like I read this really interesting point that like it's really interesting how you know ethics or so can should be divide like devised by your time, right? So at this time in human history, the idea of like caging an animal and feeding it until you eventually kill it, like that was considered unethical and an immoral way to d- do things, right? Letting animals uh-huh. die in glorious mm. combat was considered like the moral <laughs> way. That so we were like Klingons, exactly. essentially. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. Like, literally. We, uh, if, <laughs> but if, wait, if you just raise it as a pet, how will it get into Valhalla? Yeah. <laughs> yeah, 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 exactly. I mean, that is like what's so yeah. crazy about like the history of chickens and cockfighting is that like it was literally how it was perceived. Like people did not cage a- and raise wow. animals that way. You, animals would be free and maybe they killed you. Maybe you killed it. But if they could die in glorious combat, that was awesome. Right. So wow. for hundreds of years, that was the only reason why people kept chickens around. Um, you know, so they found these, they found these uh, jungle fowl and they were like, these guys like to fight each other and their colors are cool. So we're going to take a few home and then, you know, witness them yeah, as they exactly. fight to the and death. And it just caught on. It spread all over. Yeah. Um, Crazy. You know, it was kind of, okay. It, it, it was like we found Tamagotchis in the wild. 
Then they Pokemon. Them up, mm-hmm. it's, it's, and then yeah, yeah, and then, yeah, yeah. Then, right. It was Pokemon. Yeah, okay. chickens well, were original Pokemon. He's brought him to the Pokemon yeah. gym. Um, yeah. It is interesting that cockfighting, they fight each other, but bullfighting, it's against a person. Yeah. That's not a great joke. It's just an observation I just had. Um, That's true. With people, <laughs> yes. I appreciate different. it. You know, if, <laughs> would you, wait, I like how, it. Many, how many chickens do you think a bull could take? That's the real mm. question. Oh, that's an interesting point. So bulls don't corner super well. Chickens seem a lot yeah. more agile. Yeah. They get your feet. I think four right? chickens take a bull easily, but maybe what? two. If they're, easily. If they're easily. smart, easily. Too easy. <laughs> they set a trap? <laughs> yeah, they I think two good chickens could be able to beat a bull. Yeah. Yeah. The, you know, and all of early chickens, it's just cockfighting or it's like religious ceremony and sacrifice. Um, like I really can't stress enough like how popular cockfighting was through history. Like... To put it again in the, the, the cockpit example, think about it was so popular that so many people, when they saw a boat control, they thought, you know what this reminds me of? A cockpit. And enough people <laughs> had that fight. thought that we still call NASCAR <laughs> wow. cockpits, cockpits, right. planes, the space shuttle that has a cockpit. Like... And wow. like we had a lot of small places before. Like there are sarcophaguses. I mean, I'm not yeah, yeah. Well, those aren't round pretty enough. tiny. Lots of small things. Wouldn't have to yeah. be a cockpit. Yeah, but it's just it's crazy yeah. that that is still the image that like came to people's minds. Enough of these words to stick, you know. Um, and then you know we we speed up through history a lot. Uh, by the time we get to the early Greeks and Egyptians, people start like eating chicken, um, eating their eggs. The Egyptians invented egg ovens. Which is like that thing we were talking about earlier. It's like if you can incubate the eggs, you can cause the eggs, mm. to, the chickens to lay eggs every day, right? So this like drastically changed the way people consume eggs, how easy it was. And like the idea of like a breakfast food. Imagine like before this, you had to like find your first meal every day. And that would be such oh, a fucking to do, right? <laughs> and then all of a it's sudden, just there there's, there's just your breakfast is there. And then you have all this extra free also, time to do shit, right? You know what? This is actually made, I, I even appreciate breakfast more now because it's eggs and hash browns, which are made from the potato ground yeah, eggs. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Right. Dirt yeah. eggs. The, the dirt eggs. Yeah. We got it. Dirt eggs. But like, you know, this. Remember earlier? <laughs> all right, anyway. <laughs> <laughs> this kind of uh, advent, uh, convention and this sort of change <gasps> in eggs, like, completely like, allowed Wait. human society to evolve. Much quicker than it Sorry, otherwise Ant- would have. Yeah. Anthony, yeah. from Fresh Bread episode, uh, all those months back, mm-hmm. Egyptians also were fermenting stuff. We could have had a f- the first breakfast sandwich at this yeah, point. Yeah, for sure. This could have been yeah, a- yeah. happening right there. Wow. Yeah. 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 That's cool. Yeah. Okay. Toad in the hole could all be happening. Okay. Yeah. Toad yeah. in the Sorry. hole for sure. Weird that we don't call the part where you drive a boat a toad in the hole, but <laughs> it's very similar. <laughs> you, you want to make that catch on, or you want to make <laughs> toad in the hole a dirty word also for your body part? Yeah, toad in the hole is also what I call yeah. my butt. <laughs> it's a lot of names, um, different, different, different uh, elements of it. You know, around <laughs> this time, you know, we start to get into like breeding chickens for like do two different types of chickens: one for meat, one for eggs. Uh, chickens, like I said, help advance society by just freeing up all this time. But for a long time, chickens are still like the symbol. Uh, like and like, you know, being used for cockfighting for the mo- majority of their time. Like the Spartan soldiers were really into chickens because, like, the whole thing with chickens is like they don't fight for a god or a king; they fight solely to fight. <laughs> right? The chicken's only concern <laughs> is the chicken standing in front of it. Right? And there's like, <laughs> so they fucking loved chicken. The Romans believed chickens were like magical, so they would bring them on the ships. Um, during the Middle Ages, Christians had 130 uh, feasting holidays a year, and during that, and wow. those rules were a lot. on feasting that days, like a lot. you Maybe could not many. eat four-legged animals. So people found a loophole, and chickens got really big. See, that's starting to sound like famine days to yeah. me. Yeah, that's definitely. Wait, feast I mean, days 130 was, was days. Hard. That's that's a mm. lot. Yeah, yeah. I mean, or just, but they're saying like, look. Let us stick it to it was the chicken's fault that Peter was not cool with Jesus. So we got to get after him. 130. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Get after that's, him. That's, that's yeah. The point. yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, but yeah, so chickens are kind of like in this weird place for a very long time. Um, like they go from being like a peasant food to being something that really only rich people eat. Um, they, but they don't ever really catch on until uh, things start to change really fast starting in the 1840s. So in the 1840s, there is the hen fever. I don't know if you guys ever heard about this. 
Uh, oh, is this like Beatlemania? Yes, this is like, <laughs> just just like Beatlemania. <laughs> this is literally everybody started adopting Beatles at home for yeah. for two years because yeah. of Beatlemania. Yeah, I mean, this is basically what if uh, NFT but chickens, right? It was this NFT huge, but chickens. It was this huge bubble that a bunch of people made fortunes, a bunch of people lost fortunes, but for like fifteen years, uh, the UK and America were obsessed with chickens. Right, and it all came because Queen Victoria was a noted animal lover. I actually learned, like, I've always, like, we've talked about Queen Victoria and the way her love for animals changed a lot of stuff before in, like, different episodes. But what Mm -hmm. I didn't know about her love for animals was that it came from the fact that there was a rule where she wasn't allowed to hang out with anyone her own age growing up or any other children. So she only had animal friends. Uh, and that's why she loves animals oh, so really? much. Yeah, like they oh, always leave that part out of now. the story. That like she, the reason why she loved animals so much was they were literally the only companions, besides weird old adults that she was allowed to know growing up. Yeah. Um, weird old adults are kind of animal. Yeah, that's yeah. Right. especially old British royalty weird adults. That's the biggest yeah. type of animals. Yeah. They're um, so inbred. They're basically just French bulldogs. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> uh, hip dysplasia. Yeah. 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 Um, yeah. Her breathing was all weird. <laughs> yeah. So, yeah. You know, Queen Victoria got uh, gifted a chicken once and she went crazy for chickens. Yeah. She started They're gifting fun. them everywhere. I see yeah. It. She started collecting all these weird, interesting chickens. And Whoa. this huge <laughs> chicken market exploded all across Europe and America. Like I said, chickens were going for the equivalent of five thousand dollars today for a single chicken at this time. Just to check um, in, Phoebe, what did you pay for your chickens? Uh, I think one was like six dollars. <laughs> okay, okay, wow. yeah, yeah, yeah. That's yeah. just wanted to make price. sure. I don't know. I don't know. Stuff could be expensive. Wait, unlimited yeah. eggs for six dollars? Would you say you're getting a good price for eggs? Overall, I mean, yeah, I guess if the, I mean the eggs and companionship bundled uh. together is good, but then you also have to factor in how much the closed circuit live stream cameras are that I have set up all. Of- <laughs> no, <laughs> I mean, right? Yeah, because they play a lot of Fortnite. Chicken only fans. Do have, I, um, I can watch them on my phone any time, day or yeah. night. Wow. How much did you spend on like coops and stuff? Like, is it been like, roughly? Has it been really expensive or pretty affordable? The coop. It took me a long time to find a good one. It was, but I found one for three hundred bucks that we had to go pick up a couple hours away. Okay, um, yeah, but those can run thousands of dollars. Right. So hundred. So just you know, so now we're six dollars plus three hundred dollars. So we yeah. got a lot more eggs to break but even just with the. They they produce. I know like the most amount of food for the least amount of feed of all kind of big stock animals that you can have. Right. Oh, interesting. Like most beef, most meat animal, most meat, most like pork. Yeah. You get the most kind of bang for your buck with chickens in terms of like their feed. I know right. that. Okay. Um, after the, the boom uh, uh, crashes, a bunch of people take a bath, which I think is so funny. The idea of people <laughs> being like, I, I put all my money into chickens. I have 500 chickens. And yeah, yeah, no yeah. One so, is somebody's got just a warehouse yeah. full of $6,000 chickens they can't unload. Yeah. Just this, yeah, it's like I got. What, what am I gonna do with all these? If my wife finds out about these chickens, she's gonna fucking leave me. I know it. <laughs> just, <laughs> I told her it was an investment for our future. <laughs> yeah, um, it's just such a funny image. Uh, but because you know, chickens at this point have been been being bred very fast. There's a lot of variation in chickens, and one day. This guy named Charles Darwin notices, mm. oh, wow, there's a lot of weird variations in chickens. I bet, like, all animals are like that. And, like, chickens are, like, the basis for Charles Darwin's the origin of species. What? Like, it is what, like, inspired that book, and he did most of his early research on. I thought, on, wasn't on it chickens. about the finches? Are the finches not important now? It's all chickens, too? No. Just because we're talking about no, chickens this week, uh, yeah. the finches, uh, we mean, can't even give mm. finches credit. A finch no, no. wrote that, Hunter. Yeah. Wow. yeah. Wow. The finches I mean, afterwards were like, let's so change this so it's more about us, less about in chickens. this damn world. I can't stand it. <laughs> yeah, I mean, it's like the chickens were like what he saw at home. And then when he went abroad, he found out about like the finches. Oh, and, he and then he kind of built it up. Too. Like he was like, yeah, no, yeah. it wasn't chickens. That'd chickens, be dumb. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. 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 Um, he was ashamed you know, of his small town origins. In, in world... <laughs> 
In World War II, meat and pork were rationed, uh, but chickens and eggs were not. So mm. this was like a really big thing for helping chickens start to like take off. Yeah, um, and then, <laughs> take off. They're yeah, really, really establishing building. themselves. Yeah, yeah. they really they, they were war profiteers is what they, they really were. Yeah. <laughs> well, no, I mean, they don't know if they got a bit, great deal out of this, Alex. <laughs> uh, if you know what happened afterwards. Yeah, yeah that's they're, true. Like, they're like a cool little indie band that's been pitting in the work for years. And yeah, you know, right. they're finally taking this. They got finally shot, they they going explode. Forward, the know? world war happens and they put out their first number one hit. Yeah. yeah, exactly. I mean, chickens really are a loophole bird, though, right? Like, this is the work where it works for Christians and for, like, the U.S. government. It's like, we don't yeah. really know what you guys are. You're delicious, but, like, like, huh? like This is why sometimes if I tell, like, a restaurant that I'm a vegetarian, they'll be like, okay, so chicken. Because, yeah. like, it's just, it's in everybody's mind is like, well, it's barely meat. This isn't technically meat. It's just awful. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> that it's a loophole? Yeah, I don't know. It's like... Did you know that this is a really upsetting fact? Uh, turkeys and chickens are not protected by uh, animal, like every animal, like pigs and cows mm. and like larger mammals that are slaughtered for meat. They have to be, uh, it has to be so that they're not scared or in pain right. when they are slaughtered, but the same rule doesn't apply to poultry. Right. <sighs> yeah. Yep. It's the really. It's pretty horrible. Yeah. I mean, that is mm. exactly why I had just have 1950s industrialization. Yeah, and I it gets all this of is that. a real dark chapter. Um, this is yeah. a lot less fun yeah. now. I mean, it's it, it it gets it gets really. I mean, the the treatment in the industrialization process of chickens is again. I mean, the way that chickens are sort of like a metaphor for like society. We take so much from them. Uh, chickens are like such a good example of what these systems do to everybody and everything just on different scales you know just like maximizing profits fattening them up making it as awful as possible for them um solely so that our profits can get bigger and the quality of everything else can go down right, right. really so quick since we did sad facts happy chicken fact which is uh there is a colony of feral chickens in north hollywood that lives Hell under yeah. the 101 bridge on the Vineland Freeway. They're they're famous. They've been here since the 70s. The story is that a chicken truck turned over and a few got out. And they've <laughs> like periodically they'll gather a bunch of them and move them to a farm. And then like six weeks later, they'll just be a whole new chicken population because they missed a couple. And T Terry Pratchett wrote a short story about it called Hollywood Chickens. Mm. That's fun. Yeah. yeah. Hell yeah. And apparently yeah. at one point they also grew and colonized a second. They are also under the Burbank ramp two miles away. <laughs> so they're colonizing the 101 freeway. Wow. Yeah. And so this is kind of the note I sort of wanted to end on was kind of get into this for open conversation. But, you know, like chicken popularity in terms of like people raising chickens on their own was certainly on the rise pre-COVID. But covid for one of the things that it like just really triggered in people was like i gotta get some fucking chickens i gotta get yeah. chickens. like s chicken raising became such a thing um through covid and on now you know we're not still we're not on the other side of it yet we're still very much going through it but like it's amazing the both covid and the chicken fa fascination yes. Uh, but yeah, so chicken raising is uh, massively on the rise. Uh, in my neighborhood alone, I can think of like five houses that have chickens. Um, so yeah, and that's the end of my presentation. Great presentation, Anthony. Thank yeah. you so much for all the history of chickens. chickens. I learned a uh. lot. I learned a lot about Christianity. Thanks for the lesson yeah. for the Jewish people over here. Yeah, what a yeah. good... I, I mean, is there... Do you guys have a chicken thing? Is there a... The Jews? Yeah, is there a religious chicken <laughs> story you got? Is there... There is certainly if you if you go to like yeah, soup. chickens in religion, there is definitely like chicken like imagery in all of the sort of Abrahamic right. religions. Yeah, yeah. I mean, got around. It, yeah, yeah. You, you look, you get. I think you'll you'll get a, a hard boiled egg on a seder plate yeah. uh, for some like uh, symbolism. Uh, uh, and you know, definitely uh, love us. Uh, you know, uh, matzo ball soup. Uh, other have you that, guys ever participated in Kaparat, the Yom Kippur tradition of waving a chicken over your head? Oh my God, that sounds amazing! Yeah. <laughs> uh, for for thousands of years, many Jews have observed the same ritual on Yom Kippur Eve, waving a chicken over their head. Uh, Yom Kippur is not not my favorite uh, holiday. <laughs> uh, it's just it's the only one's yeah. not about food really so much. Uh, it's kind of a bummer. Um, uh -huh. 
So it's yeah. like so much about food that they're like, no food for you guys. <laughs> <laughs> The only thing we give a shit about you're taking away? Yeah, yeah. Only guilt for one whole day. I'm just going to update my quick Google on this, which is now I'm against copper rot, just so you know. Mm. It's, it's not a it's not a healthy live chicken that gets to live a great life after oh, that. Oh, yeah, it didn't sound like it, yeah. to be honest. <laughs> yeah. It didn't it's sound... Fine. They yeah. called it twirl, like thought... it sounded great. Anyway, mm. apparently... It's an Orthodox yeah. tradition. You told me a, about it. I'd never heard of it. To be honest, I didn't trust it. The second you <laughs> described it, I was no. like, this is, uh, this with everything like else I've learned, here. doesn't sound good. This episode is brought to you by the Awesome Coffee Club. AwesomeCoffeeClub.com slash Alex Falcone. You can join now. It's a coffee subscription service from the author John Green. Set up with 100% of profits being donated to reduce maternal and childhood mortality in Sierra Leone. It's a coffee subscription club for charity. And you can help support the show and get 30% off by using promo code Alex Falcone at checkout. That's the awesome coffee club. They've got light roast for people with taste, dark roast uh. for the rest of you. You can get all kinds of... of <laughs> Wait, what? is it not cool to drink dark roast coffee? No, to like Alex it? has shamed me for this many times. Oh, so yeah, this is a. I just I this. this is. Is that a uh, thing? Yeah, yeah, yeah. People who like coffee, who like like Alex, uh, mm -hmm. they don't like it when you roast it the rest of the way. So <laughs> yeah, yeah. You're like it, you know how like some the people who like food don't like it to be burned to shit. It's sort yeah, of like know, that you know, but with coffee, like doing a well done beam. Yeah, yeah, you're like, I like, no. in, instead of it being a little toothsome, I like my pasta to be blackened to charcoal and taste no, like Phoebe, shit. You know, yeah. Phoebe, you know, you know the thing where it's our favorite kind of s'more is when it's a just raw <laughs> bag of marshmallows, right, Phoebe? Yeah. That's the thing that we all can agree on. Yeah. <laughs> Do you really? I love a sushi s'more. Here's, yeah. here's, the, here's the great thing, though, about the Awesome Coffee Club, awesomecoffeeclub.com slash Alex Falcone. You could get either of these, whichever side of this petty squabble you, uh, you take. I love a squabble. Squabble, presumably, a phrase that comes from chickens. Um, you can join that, and you can also help support uh, John yeah. Green's efforts to reduce childhood mortality in Sierra Leone. AwesomeCoffeeClub.com. Use the promo code AlexFalcon for 30% off anything, including one-time purchases or a subscription. Which one has more caffeine? Yeah, that does sound good. Is it dark roast that has more uh, no, caffeine? No, it's light. light. I believe okay. it's light because yeah, it roasts the, uh, your why I, the, the That's the why I drink nice. dark roast, because I can drink more coffee. Which is, mm. that's my policy. It's because if I drink light roast coffee, if I have more than two cups, then I go crazy. And mm. I want to drink coffee all day. Okay. In both cases, with the Awesome Coffee Club, it's roasted to perfection. I don't know. None of this is coffee that I need to read. The point is <laughs> awesomecoffeeclub.com. Use the promo code Alex Falcon, and we appreciate them supporting our show and sponsoring the list of best things ever, which we'll get to now. It's a good week for plugs. I think yeah. plugging books, plugging coffee. We've been doing a really <laughs> yeah, good job great copy. We're great selling this. stuff this week. I Hunter, think. I would like you as fast as possible to yeah. read us the master list. It's time to rank chickens <gasps> now on the master list of best things ever. Hunter's going to catch you up on the 23 things that are on this list, including reading who the first one is sponsored by. Hunter, take it away. All right. Number one is Hot Water, sponsored by Awesome Coffee Club. Number two is <laughs> Firefighters. Number three, Zelda. Number four, Arcades. Number five, Women's Basketball. Number six, human children, a.k.a. Mm -hmm. children. Number seven, my neighbor Totoro. Number eight, pro wrestling. Number nine, romance novels, trees, Star Wars, advice columns, variety. Like, just the idea of that. The sun, fresh bread, uh, Nordic track, which I still don't know what that is. You've had yeah. chances to look it up. I, I have, and I, I have even asked you all to explain to me what it is, but I can't keep it in my brain. Uh, Stand-up <laughs> comedy. I can tell you about a Nordic track. I spent like two days doing nothing but learning about Nordic tracks for yeah. that episode. It was great. Yeah. The only thing a Nordic track is is just a thing that you get from your mom's cousin that lives in your basement mm. and like collects stuff on it. Yeah. I mean, that is something that we did cover. You want yeah. a really ineffective hat rack? Uh, you want some of the hang scarf This is awesome. So good. Track. Another week where I don't learn what it is. <laughs> number 17 is comedy. Number 18, powerlifting, cat videos, playing Halo with the boys, half ass in it, which I that's kind of low. Uh, new metal. And then, of course, the worst thing of all time, the thing everyone hates, Waffle House. Especially okay, I've just the people involved, too. It's very common yeah. for everyone yeah. to just hate on Waffle House employees and culture. 
And I this is a show that does that. This, so this is a, a recent YouTube comment. Um, recent, so even though the episode was a few weeks ago. But we just got a comment last week from at Kelvin Hicks on YouTube who said, in all my years of sports and working out, I believe the Nordic Track is the single best piece of equipment I have yeah. ever used based on the benefits I got and how quickly I was able to benefit from it. I still own one. It's in my garage. I use it to this day. So just yeah. so you know, Hunter, the people are coming out in favor of the Nordic Track. Yeah, yeah I I love I, it too. I, as soon as I find out what it is, I'm going to go get one. Yeah. Have you? Did you not watch late night infomercials? Listen, I lived in the woods when I was a child, it, oh, so we, I did not have tele, traditional television in the way you know it, mm, as an yeah, elitist, as a coastal elite. <laughs> we didn't uh, have TV. Yeah. I had a stick. I had a stick okay. at night. Yeah. So it's Phoebe, literally... oh, instead of Nick at night, you watch Stick at Night. Okay. <laughs> stick at night's yeah. very good. Stick as... at night. Phoebe, hearing this list, looking at this list, uh, 23 things already on this list. Where does chickens go in your heart? I think number one. You think wow. chickens uh, are better than, than coffee? Absolutely. With coffee and tea? Uh, d- d- the, the strife I just saw play out between four dear friends. Yeah. <laughs> they're, they're way better than coffee. Yeah. You don't okay. get you jittery. And you know what? Whether they're light or dark, they're still fun and going to love you. The thing I love the most about this is I love the idea of number one chickens brought to you by Awesome Coffee Club. Yes. <laughs> That's pretty good. That's pretty good. It would be good. I mean, if we get if we rank at one, I'm going to go out and dig up a new sponsor, I think. Um, but Phoebe, you just made it sound like chickens can love you. Is that do they love you? Oh, 100 percent. They can. Aww. They can recognize voices. They oh, recognize over a hundred faces. Well, you gotta hope you're one of those hundred, I guess. Yeah, I was about to say. They have. They're one of the only uh, uh, social animals that have empathy and self awareness in the wow. bird world. They're they're incredibly affectionate, and the thing that's mm. so cool about them is that they're not dogs or horses. Who like we have our society wouldn't exist without dogs or horses. We've developed this like biological partnership with them where it's like yeah of course we we have to love each other like it's not a surprise right, right. but when you get like chickens by all accounts like think of all the things that we've talked about today all the horrors that we've put them through yeah. we've domesticated mm-hmm. them to fight them but i'm gonna we're, i'm gonna close my laptop after this have a nice smile to myself over spending time with my friends mm-hmm. and then i'm gonna go close my <laughs> girls up for the night and pet them and listen to their little cooings and they're gonna look at me with their little reptile eyes and be like, hey, thanks, thanks so much for coming down and hanging out with us one last wow. time. The night ends. Like there's real, they follow me around, they sit in my lap, they perch oh. on my shoulder, they come running to me. This sounds very good. I love them. You also have a human child. I do. So you uh, would rank I- these six <laughs> positions ahead of human children. <laughs> you would say you like your chickens six times as much as Ooh, your kid. Uh-oh. That's not- Listen to me. Hold on a second. I like all chickens much more than I like Mm, all kids. Uh, It doesn't say Phoebe's child. uh, I love whatever babies in my belly. I guess she's. I don't really know her yet, but she seems fine. But but okay, let me ask this: your your toddler. Yeah. If a hawk took your toddler. Mm Mm-hmm. Go on. Uh huh. That was supposed to be enough on its own. You don't think? I mean, I'm assuming <laughs> that would hurt more. Well, and did what? Okay, Ezra, you don't have uh, chickens of your own, but you do have human children. So we, we're getting a strong number one vibe from Phoebe. Yeah, she's um, pitting all of her eggs in that basket. <laughs> she I, is, including eh. my own human eggs. Human egg, egg, yeah. I, I lo- look. I love that a lot. I love the idea of shaking up the top side. I think I, the other thing I'm going for is what's the funniest order for me to read things. And I like the idea of. Um, Romance novels, pro wrestling, chickens uh, as the three. Mm-hmm. So I think that's that's what's going to be. So I'd put it as the new number eight, I think, is where yeah, I'd put it. I mean, you know, I got, so in pro wrestling, in uh-huh. the late 80s, early 90s, there was this wrestler who had this gimmick called the Red Rooster. Mm-hmm. And he was, a, he was a big chicken man. And that was his whole gimmick. Right. Um, I have a counter to this. I have a counter to this and, argument. It's not your turn yet. Yeah, but I, w- I want to jump in as soon as he's done. And the thing is... He his heart wasn't in it. He hated it. The actor he was given this gimmick against his will, and he had to go out for weeks and um, do this, even though everyone hated it. Um, <laughs> and I think that proves that chickens are somehow not better than wrestling. So that's huh. why I would mm. put Does them it? slightly. Mm. Mm. Um, I think that's finally yeah. chickens getting some revenge. They're like, fine, you yeah. you want to fight us? 
Yeah, yeah, yeah. We'll yeah. ruin. Yeah, this we'll is ruin chickens the making sport. humans fight point. in a ring and for see, their entertainment. That's my argument: is that's how true. do you get pro wrestling without? Like, isn't pro wrestling just mm-hmm. cockfighting with people? And that's, mm-hmm. that's is that not point. what it is? That's a good mm. point. Right, exactly. <laughs> it's our pale yeah. imitation of something we made chickens do. It's appropriating yeah. their culture, which we yes. forced them into. Pro wrestling is just... Is, we wouldn't have it without chickens. I think we all know yeah. that now. Oh my That's God. a good point. I'm going to go... So I'm, really I'm gonna, thinking yeah. on Ezra's point of view of what's the best order to read them in, mm-hmm. it's much funnier if it goes chickens than human children. I think that's the funniest place for it <laughs> to be. That's pretty funny. Now, because we're a podcast that is a little over indexed on male hosts, if we put chickens oh, above yeah. women's basketball, that feels real bad. But if we that put it over like children, it's kind of fun now. As long as they're not right next to each other, I don't think anyone's going to think yeah, that so way. Yeah, so you could do it yeah. you know, between Zelda and arcades. You just can't do it right above. Chickens could be six, then it would be really funny. Women's basketball, chickens, human children is a great <laughs> corner of a list. Um, I think that, I mean, it's got to be top 10 because it just it sounds. Funny. To be honest, I was very convinced by that. Like, I learned a lot this week, uh-huh. mm-hmm. and I really started rooting for chickens yeah, over the yeah. course of the episode. So I, I am also feeling quite high. Um, firefighting's in my blood, but mm-hmm. Zelda's just some dumb game for idiots. So I say we put chickens <laughs> number three. Uh-huh. Also, chickens three. Zelda Ooh. does sound pretty funny. Chickens. It is, yeah, yeah, you, know what? Zelda's, oh, you know what? Yeah. If you In put Zelda. chickens third, I'll name my next chicken Zelda. What? <laughs> Naming rights. Wait, can you name we've it the had, best podcast had chicken a ever? We've full-on bribe on this yeah. list before. That's a bribe. Zelda's the best podcast best chicken ever. ever. I gotta say, if anyone who anyone who's played Zelda before knows, you do not fuck with the chickens in Zelda. Yeah. Yeah, right? dude. I mean, so Oh, that's so is, true. They swarm on chicken. you and they kill like, you. They're like a gang. Like if you fuck with one of them, you fuck with all of them. Yeah. Like if you yeah. attack one, literally a million chickens come out of nowhere and kill you. Raph, um, put them as three. Bump Zelda yeah, down. So, yeah. yeah. Do. Clearly, Nintendo's so. not confused about who is better, chickens yeah. or Zelda. Yeah, it's happening. Oh my god. <laughs> yeah. I feel like, I think right. I feel I'm like I'm convinced. I think this is the right answer. And I, my, my main convinced thing that's convinced me is making Phoebe. Name a chicken after us. Yeah. Yes. Want me to up the stakes a little bit? I'll do a poll when my next batch comes. Uh-huh. You can, your viewing, whether it's oh. you or your viewing audience members, can pick mm-hmm. whatever breed. Naming rights? Whatever breed they want me to get to name this chicken. Wow. Oh my so gosh. I love this, and I will do this if chickens are third. Yeah. If you want me to make chickens first, you got to name the baby after us. I. <laughs> It's not worth it. You you gotta, <laughs> well, you got to let us take a poll of what your baby is. Anthony, made. Alex, Hunter, Ezra, Bob. It's a bad, it's a bad call. It's bad. <laughs> too many but letters. The order can be up to you. What's the first name and what are the three middle names? That's on you, but uh-huh. it has to be all four of our names. I think Ezra's yeah. first name. That makes yeah. sense. It's, a good, it's a good name. Ezra, Alex, Anthony, Hunter is actually a name that sounds Ooh. like she could be a congressman. Yeah. I like that. Yeah. All right. All right. Well, good. All right. Well, I'll move it up to first if that happens. But for now, we're going to keep it. Chickens are the new third best thing ever. Not as good as firefighters, but better than Zelda. Yeah. That's great. I'm happy with that. I can go. I'm going to go report to the girls tonight. I'm going to tell them that we won. (laughs) Yeah. Absolutely. I can't wait. All right. Let's let's get going with one more thing. All right. Uh, first, let's check in with the mailbag. We got a few things. First, we got another. We got a great, honest five star review the other day mm. from Bogart Og on Apple Podcasts, who says, "Y'all, I legit laughed out loud every episode at something. I totally endorse having a parasocial relationship with these folks." Aw, mm. isn't that sweet? Yeah. yeah. And what's great well, about we'll that is parasocial if, friends. It's cool. Yeah, yeah. It's like paragliding, but with social stuff. <laughs> yeah. Have enough stamina for it. Um, also, a YouTube comment that I wanted to share, which from last week was our topic about half assing it. It's a great point, and we really should have done this. Uh, but Alfia says, uh, should have stopped this episode halfway through. Just should have just cut just it just off. Just stopped. Up, yeah. Just like 28 minutes into the episode, should have just stopped. Just completely stopped. Otherwise, five stars. And then um, I want to read another YouTube comment from Mallory, who said, first of all, hell yeah, Phoebe Bottoms next week. So yeah, look at this. Oh, Phoebe. Thank you. People remember you. Secondly, having listened to the podcast, instead of watching it, I would like verbal confirmation that I was hearing aliens. 
So this is a thing that I did last week. I don't know why I do it. I don't remember where it came from. There's a couple like, words you just like to say wrong. Yeah. Yep, and, and that's one you. of them. I think you should always say it aliens. I don't know why. Oh. Couldn't tell you the origin of that. They have aliens? Yes. Yep. Yeah. That's the you one. You say it aliens. Wow. That's how I say it. it that's I don't a know new why. one. I don't think I've ever heard that before. Really? Yeah. Ever, anytime I've said the word on the podcast, I've said I aliens. Mean, it's been a while. Look, we all know Alex is secretly like a NSA spook, and this is a misinformation psyop he's trying to do to discredit the if alien If you say if you pronounce it differently, then there aren't yeah. aliens. Yeah, you maybe. know, it's it's like the CIA releasing the term conspiracy theorist to you right, know right. disregard people. You're just out here saying aliens, making yep. people look silly. Yep. Um, well, we might talk some more about conspiracies next week, Anthony. We'll have some opportunity, maybe even about aliens, because next week our topic is the moon. We're talking about the fucking moon next week. Um, we're mostly going to be talking about the Apollo 11 landing on the moon, which I think is one of the coolest things that ever happened. But we'll talk a little bit about the moon in general, I think, as well, because uh, mostly just because it's more fun if the list has the sun and the moon on it and they are fighting. We're going to see which one is better. Uh, we'll, we'll determine that forever. But mostly, I'm just going to tell you guys a bunch of stuff that I really like about the uh, about the moon landing because I have so many fun moon landing facts. Wait, can I have one right now? Yeah, yeah. Um, a tease. Do it. What mm. happens, Alex? What would happen if a werewolf went to the moon? Oh, what Ooh. would happen? Would they be werewolf all the time? The time like, yeah, would it be like all werewolf all the time? You're a moon scientist. Oh, uh, come what on. Do you think? Yeah. This is a very would, good would you question. Go, like, well, super, so are they, would you wait, go so Super Saiyan? And my like, feeling is a werewolf on the light side of the moon would be wolf all the time, and the dark side would be man, so he could walk back and forth at his leisure. Oh, you could just kind of schedule your week based off what you need to be. Yeah. yeah. But if that's true, if that is true that it's based on the moon uh, getting a full reflection, it's actually the sun that he's responding to. That's the thing about werewolves you don't think about. Because the moon has no light, right? It's not radiant. It's the You're sun right. bouncing off it. Yeah. So they just like, it, he just likes uh, dappled light like everybody else. He likes to be a little, like, bounced. This is going to send shivers through the werewolf fan community. <laughs> really it was the sun me. all along. Yeah. It was the sun. I, I'm, I'm very open to talking about that. So um, that's something we'll talk about. Um, we'll talk about the 1202 alarm. Uh, we'll talk about landing in boulders. Um, actually, here's one of the thing, here's the thing to think about. Uh, th- this is a, uh, just a funny thought, but since we're talking about conspiracy theories, I was reading a lot about Michael Collins this week. So you guys remember Michael Collins is the guy who had to wait in the van while the two guys landed on the moon. He had to orbit. Um, And I love thinking about if the moon landing was fake, how mad Michael Collins would be that he didn't get to be on the fake. Like, it's a green (laughs) screen. And he's like, just let me go on the moon side of the set. They'll never believe it. No, Michael Collins. (laughs) You can stay on the van side of the set. Oh, that's so. That's someone so can't. Sad. They, we can't all be having a good time. Okay, they have to buy yeah, it. Right, right. Yeah, no one will believe it if we're all walking around the moon, kicking and having a great time. But if one of us is sad, it'll be more plausible. That'll make more sense. There's like a PA in a moon pit somewhere. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> anyone want Nature Valley? Like, get that off the moon. <laughs> <laughs> so there. That's a moon thing to think about for this week. Uh, all right, let's get going. All right, that's it for our show. We'll be back next week talking about the moon. Our theme music is by at Metrix. Our logo designed by Tom Typography. You can find us on Instagram at BTE Pod and on YouTube. You can follow along, watch our great, uh, our great visual aids at, at Alex Falcone on YouTube. You can leave us an honest five star review on Apple Podcasts. You can say anything you need, be completely honest. Tell us how you truly feel as long as it's five stars. You can send us your thoughts, mail at the best, at bestthingeverpodcast.com, and you can support us either. By becoming a member of the Awesome Coffee Club, awesomecoffeeclub.com slash Alex Falcon. We appreciate their support of the show. And you can support us by joining the Patreon, patreon.com slash BTE pod, where you could become one of the producers of the show. Producers like Ranger Patrick, John the Consigliere, the Duke of Jill, the best assistant regional manager, Sean, and Claire TBD. Now, let's find out which was true and which was a lie. Um, Ezra's been able to swim for a while, I think. Uh, I mean, this is actually, you kind of got this right, basically. Uh, Wait, really? Yes. When did you learn how to swim? So I took swim lessons basically when Caleb took swim lessons uh, because I was like, like, I could swim okay, but this is as close of a true lie as you could possibly get. Because like, Did, I, you must have said this at some point and it was in the back of my brain. I can't. Because no, yeah, basically like when, when my yeah, when my son was like, you know, pretty young taking swim lessons, I was like, I should probably learn how to like 
be a good enough swimmer that I could save him as well if I need be. And so right. I it was taking adult swim lessons at the Y. Um, wow. So, kidding. So there was yeah. no lie this week. I mean, it's like it was like seven years oh. ago, maybe, or like uh, instead of like five. And I could swim a little bit before, but like definitely got a lot better. So, but you I could know. swim. Yeah. So this I could is swim. Yeah. Te- so it's I like that's close. Was, technically, there was a lie, and it was that. I don't know. Right. This sounds like quite a scandal to me. This yeah. could send shockwaves okay. through the community. Okay. okay, I'll admit it. The entire <laughs> presentation was a lie. Chickens don't actually exist. The government oh, spy no. drones. Look, chickens aren't know. real. Chickens uh, aren't real. Um, There's just little guys in there. They're just aliens. Aliens exist. (laughs) It's a government psyop. We all know this. Well, all right. Well, uh, it oh. was definitely true that I played in a poker game run by a bunch of meth dealers, uh, sort of a meth gang. Although by the time I worked with them, they were mostly just uh, driving really big motorcycles. They were doing less selling of meth those in these days. Actually, the true thing about it <laughs> uh, was that at one point, one of the guys, his dad was like a vice president at a huge company. And he was like, "What? <laughs> how much money are you making selling meth? And the guy told him, and he was like, all right, I'll pay you double that if you stop selling meth and go to college. So I met him at a community college because he was, like, currently not selling meth and getting paid double meth salary wow. to just hang out Ooh, at the community double college. Double meth. And double so, meth. Uh, salary is such a good name for something. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. It's not bad. <laughs> uh, but he switched from meth to math, and I met him in a econ class, and uh, we played poker together. It was great. But they were form- they were mostly retired meth dealers. <laughs> um, you can follow me on TikTok at Alex underscore Falcone. Uh, you can follow Ezra at ezrafox.busky.social on Blue Sky. At Ezra yeah. Fox on Blue Sky. I want to thank you to um, all the uh, Facebook hive mind who responded and all the no, no one who responded on Blue Sky to my chicken question. So thanks to uh, Ira, Jenny, Lynn, uh, Lori, Val, Brandon, Steph, uh, Anthea, uh, Ariel, Beth, Graham, Randy, uh, Daniel, uh, Andrew, Jeff, Alex, Liz, and Mackenzie. So uh, Blue Sky, get it going like because no one knows me yet. <laughs> it's, it's a fun, small place, Blue Sky. Uh, Anthony, you do tear up extremely easily at movies. I don't want to make this feel like not a great fact, because it is a good fact, but man, I think that's probably true of everybody else here as well. I tear uh, up at two movies only. Oh, really? Oh, I yeah. cried every movie. I, I, and um, and I, I have a thing where I will cry at a movie even being angry at it, <laughs> where I'm like, I know what you're doing to me. I feel, I feel manipulated, and it's hella working. I only cry if it's dogs. If it's okay. a dog thing, I mm, cry. Right. Other than My- that, I don't care. My, Speaking of dogs, Hunter's address. No, no, really no. Is. I want to hear Ezra's cry my movies. movies. My two oh, movies. Yeah. It's only two scenes for each. So it's one scene at the end, towards the end of um, uh, Wreck It Ralph, uh, and then also <laughs> <laughs> one scene. Like, the there's end. no way they're adult movies. There's no, <laughs> no way. No, no, and the other no one way. is they one have scene to be for children. One scene towards the end of Remember the Titans. Uh, uh, those are the only two movies that oh, can okay. make me cry. Interesting. Yeah. All right. It's just football games and whatever Wreck It Ralph is about. Video games. Oh my god. Just gotta talk about Wreck It Ralph. I haven't seen Wreck-It Ralph. It seems oh, good. Um, it's, pretty, it's pretty good, yeah. It's uh, pretty Hunter, good. Uh, yeah. you can listen hey. to Hunter's podcast, Old Gamers hey. Almanac, about old games, please, just like uh, Wreck-It Ralph. This week, I want to say, like, please do, because we're actually coming up on, I think we're about four episodes from episode 100, um, and Ooh. we tend to get pretty freaky at milestone time on that show. Ooh. So if, you, if you've thought about becoming, getting way into video games and ruining your life, check that show out right now. Right. It's real good. It's real good stuff. Yeah, Ezra's uh, on it sometimes. I've been on 2% of the episodes. <laughs> nice. And, Al- uh, yeah, Anthony. Alex, you're kind of a Wreck-It Ralph now that I think about it. I think you Am really I? relate to that movie. Like, you, yeah, I'm sure I cry. You in Sun- inside Wreck- uh, yeah, he, he's, Wreck- he's a hater, kind of, who you, tries to yeah. change. Oh, yeah. okay. Okay. And then Phoebe Bottoms. Uh, oh, that's weird why that fact got copied over. Don't look at that. Um, Phoebe Bottoms, uh, bingo non-winner. Um, you can follow at Phoebe Bottoms on Instagram, PhoebeBottoms.com. You can also read her books now that you know the backstory. Now that you know. <sighs> Thanks for being here, Phoebe. It's so great to see you again. And uh, th- no, I'll, pictures of uh, Phoebe's chickens forthcoming on our Instagram page. All right. We'll right. talk to everybody next week. Thank you so much for listening, everybody. Bye. Bye. Bye.